So let's talk about Dragon. Dragon Zubovic is a corrupt cop who came to America because has Zvedevede with the butcher and such, and he came packing a weapon, a melee, and a perk deck. So, how well do they all work as a build? Well, let's just jump right into it. I really don't have anything else to say. Do you have anything else to say? So we might as well start with the Lion's Roar Rifle, based on the HS product VHSD2. This is actually the first appearance of this rifle in, well shoot, any form of media, so uh, Payday Inhale the first, so good for them. The original VHS was remarkably not unlike the FAMAS, which would be the Clarion in Payday 2, but over time the weapons become a bit more lean and unique looking. Rather than taking comparisons first, let's go over mods because the end result gets us remarkably close to another Payday weapon. With the Precision Barrel, Tactical Compensator, LED Combo, and a Sight, the Lion's Roar will have stats on par with the Modified Union 556. Same magazine size, total ammo, rate of fire, damage accuracy, just with a little bit less stability, concealment, and of course, a slower reload speed. Nearly a quarter of the speed of the Union because that can take a speed pull mag and already reload snappy, and the Lion's Roar is a slower rifle without a speed pull. Weird. That said, there are still plenty of reload skills that we can make use of, so that shouldn't be terribly much of an issue if we play our cards correctly. The Lion's Roar is a surprisingly dependable light rifle, given how few you'll see running amok in heists, so I think this one's good to go. Just just, ru just run with it, just trust me on this one, run with it. For our secondary, we'll be opting for the Bomb Heist's Leo Pistol. This came with the heist that came alongside Dragon, this was a separate DLC but they were paired together. It's another Croatian beauty courtesy of HS product, in this case the HS2000, or more accurately its American marketed variant, the XD. The Leo is a bit better than a cross kill when unmodded, but you can bump the cross kill up to better stats than you could with the Leo with mods. That said though, the Leo's got a better pickup rate, and it's got one of the lowest hip fire spread modifiers in the game, which makes it a fantastic run and gun pistol, which suits the light rifle very well. That's a nice touch. An IPSC Compensator, Combined Module, Extended Mag, Red Dot Sight for the stability, and alongside, ran out the Leo with one sleek pistol that can handle pretty much whatever you throw at it. And hey, if you're looking to collect Sydney safe stuff, the Leo skin is well under a dollar, even for a mint condition. Which makes this a great choice just to say you have one of these things. They were available for like two weeks, so now you can say you've got one. Dragon came packing his own meat cleaver, which I really couldn't find out much info about seeing as it's just a meat cleaver. 60 uncharged damage, 160 charge with a 2 second wind up when you got melee skills. I don't know what else you want from me. You can go hacking and whacking and chopping that meat. That's from something. That's from something! Oh, it's Butch Pete. That took, that took too long to, f to figure out what I was even... And now we get to Dragon's Perk deck, Infiltrator. Oh boy, Infiltrator. When you're within 18 meters of a couple enemies, you take 36% less damage from enemies. You restore 20% of your health on a melee hit, and every melee hit following one within a second does 10 times the damage just like Jacket, because it's got the same perk card as Jacket Overdog. Okay, yeah, that's not fooling anybody, is it? All right, so there's some problems here. The first one is that Overdog doesn't operate like how the card says it does. This perk lies to you. You don't get one second a time to 10 melee damage, it's seven seconds, provided you don't miss. With the jacket overdog, you could miss as long as it was within one second. Here, you don't get that luxury. You get seven seconds as long as you don't miss. And where a sociopath restores 10% of your health every second with melee kills, infiltrator heals 20% on hit once every 10 seconds. So you've got an anemic version of Sociopath that offers a fifth of the health regen per second without the panic, without any additional armor or armor regen, and Jacket's perk deck offers both. I mean, at least Biker offers you additional armor gating right there in the perk deck. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. It, 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 it isn't, but we'll, we'll roll with it. Obligatory Molotov usefulness comment. Here comes some skills. So I faced Joker, Partners in Crime, and Hostage Taker in the controller tree. First off, I need health regen, and the perk deck just won't cut it. And then, over in Enforcer, I've aced Underdog, Die Hard, Basic Shock and Awe, Bullseye, and aced Iron Man because I figure we're going to need the ICTV for this one. I've aced Steady Grip and Lock and Load to take advantage of the Lion Roar's speed, Basic Parkour because we're already using the ICTV, so we need movement speed, otherwise you're kind of just a lump of molasses with a gun. 
And a based gun nut, one handed talent, nine lives, pumping iron, and bloodthirst with basic trigger happy to give the pistol a hand in taking out enemies reliably. It also gives us another down and it beefs up our melee. Combined, we should end up with a pretty good rifle and pistol, decent melee, and whatever else that last part is. I have a bad feeling about this one. I've tried Infiltrator before. I went down nine times. Let's see if the ICTV changes things, I guess. Well, surprise, surprise, the ICTV actually makes Infiltrator practical? Not good, practical. What you've got here is a sort of simplistic version of Maniac, weirdly enough. You're taking a lot less damage, which makes something like the ICTV last a whole lot longer. Convert the toughest looking guy you can as soon as possible, because without health regen and the bonus health from Partners in Crime and Hostage Taker, you're relatively soft. It's kind of sad. On the plus side, you'll probably only need a new convert once, maybe twice, on a tougher heist. The health regen on the perk deck is almost entirely superfluous. And really, just use the melee skills to chain together kills on regular enemies when your mag's nearly dry, and then reload. You can't fish for health regen on something that generates 46 health over 10 seconds, so play this more like an armor build with the regen just being part of Bloodthirst, and you end up with something presentable. I wouldn't call this a great build, the weaponry is pretty solid, but you're dealing with one of the most anemic perk decks in the game to run it. My final verdict- Just play sociopath. If you don't own the jacket character pack, I can't call Infiltrator a reasonable analog. The perk's only saving grace is its damage reduction, and its melee abilities work differently from sociopath, which begs the question why they needed to change the jacket perk deck card from no talk to overdog so it breaks the admittedly neat naming convention the deck had going for it in the first place. The gun, the pistol, the melee, all fine at the very least. That's two out of three for the character pack, not counting Dragon himself, and the bomb's pistol is pretty solid as well. Perk deck, can't say so. I don't know how to end this video, so I'll go out on this note. Dragon's actor, Dragomir Mersic, was part of what could have become one of the biggest bank robberies in Swedish history. He helped plan and stood guard during a 1990 robbery on Gotabanken in Sweden. I don't think I pronounced that right. Deal with it for now. He was found by authorities and arrested, sentenced to three and a half years of jail time. During his time in prison, Dragomir practiced Buddhism and upon being released entered into a college to become a sports consultant, later becoming a gymnastic trainer for the Swedish Olympic Committee in 2000. This led to him working alongside actors, where he ended up in the 2010 film Easy Money, the 2014 film Edge of Tomorrow, and then in 2015 would lend his voice and physical likeness to a little heist film inspired game you might have heard of. It's called Payday 2. Wikipedia has this amazing tidbit that I just need to read word for word. He's the only person who has given their likeness to a character in the crime-themed game who has been involved in illegal activities. That's... <laughs> that's where we're at. Um, okay, uh, yeah, to see you around. I'm gonna go revel in that sentence for a while. Oh, and they did technically steal the bonds from Gotabanken, but the Swedish government rendered those bonds null and void almost immediately, so they didn't even earn anything for all their trouble. Ah. Uh, oh. Did, did Dragon get paid well? Did Dragomir get paid well to appear in the Dragon character pack? I hope he did. Because, what a ride. Just give the man a nickel. I mean, the biggest heist in Swedish history. Just give him a nickel. Let him have it. <laughs> no, but, okay, I mean, it is cool that he, he turned his life around. And, you know, became an actor so he could appear in Payday 2. But, no. Oh. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.